It is rare when scientific findings uh, make policy choices crystal clear to us. And when you read um, Dr. Hansen and some of the other folks who are publishing on a topic, it is clear that we can no longer sustain the use of coal in the production of electricity in this country. It is the critical target for us. Um, there are obviously other issues regarding um, uh, use of uh, gas and oil, but when you look at the uh, evidence, the evidence, the, the crystal, the argument is to stop coal plants immediately, and he has some very strong language on how he'd like to do it. <coughs> I just want to take a minute to talk a little bit about, about coal, <clears throat> how it's used in the United States, how it's used around the world, um, and then just a couple of facts and then a couple of myths about it. Um, the U.S. produces about 1.1 billion tons of coal annually. That, that provides about 50% of the electricity in the country. New York State has a limited amount of coal um, in there, its electrical system. Some states are almost totally um, dependent on coal. Um, the, most of the coal comes from the western, western mines, some from the Midwest, and some from Appalachia. Um, the, we have huge unmined reserves in Alaska. And the industry will tell you that we have reserves that are that can we can exploit for the next 100 years, and it's essential for us to understand that. Um, if you look carefully at this, and I think that there's enough research going on now, um, yes, there is a lot of coal under the United States, um, either for environmental or economic reasons. It, it is um, it is not going to sustain us for 100 years. We don't know what the number is. But I was, it was interesting for me last year to watch when the price of coal was at its highest it's ever been, that they still weren't opening up any new mines um, because the cost in many areas of getting at that coal is too expensive. Um, and the uh, environmental degradation, I think, would even make our uh, regulatory process um, fall some of these things to a halt. Um, so the, the, the question of the reserves is it's not as, a, as you know, it's kind of reminds me of everyone when we make, made our bet on natural gas and oil that we had this you know, endless amount of it, um, and then we found out that it came back to bite us, that we didn't have an endless amount of it. Um, and so I think you were seeing the same myths perpetuated. The other thing that people think about in the, in the discussion or that, that comes up as a topic is, well, in the United States we're burning coal, but there are places around the world that are burning three times the amount, and three times the amount of reserves, China and India combined. Um, and so why should we do anything here if they're going to be, you know, burning? I think, you know, I was thinking about how to answer that question tonight, and I'll go into it at greater length if you want me to, but I, um, I was watching the inaugural things, and I watched Pete Seeger and Bruce Springsteen do This Land Is Your Land, and I think that's a good enough reason for us to say why we should say stop here in the United States, uh, why we should stop calling the United States, because this is where we live. Um, anyway, the coal industry agenda, um, is the opposite of what I just described. And what I'm going to talk to you about is their, their precise planning and public policy strategy for the United States. Um, this was what they were doing in 1904, uh, 2004 to 2005. Build 150 new coal plants. Um, the, and um, they would basically be, they would need 150, 200 billion dollars and private and public capital to do that. That would effectively um, preclude most of the energy industry from, from uh, moving into clean energy over the years because the capital cost would be uh, so consumed and taken up by, by the coal that we wouldn't be able to do anything else. What a smart business strategy. The second agenda um, for them is to intensify the use of existing coal plants, earn more coal than the old um, ones that pollute the most. Um, three, promote all forms of clean coal technology. Um, the purpose there from the industry's point of view is not to be good environmentalists. The purpose of the, of the industry is that a clean coal technology burns more coal um, per BTU than a, than a dirty coal plant. It's just, just so that it's another way to burn coal, which is what their business is. Um, the fourth agenda is to develop global markets. The, the idea there is that they can um, then be able to um, both market and finance coal worldwide and it becomes a much bigger and more profitable industry as a result of it. That's their agenda for the, for the United States and the world. It's the opposite of what I just described what we're trying to do. Um, so the coal campaign, which comes out of this, 
which is sponsored by National Sierra Club and run with the help and organizational um, skill of many, 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 many environmental groups around the country, um, have decided um, to adopt a very a coal campaign with a very simple vision, no to coal, yes to alternatives. And the way that they, they the agenda that they set out um, is to uh, stop the initial wave of coal plants, which are mostly in the Midwest, stop all coal plants nas nationally, retire existing coal plants, and then um, adopt what is essentially a keep it in the ground public policy strategy. Now, how do you do this? Um, when the industry is starting uh, a campaign to do 150 coal plants around the country, that means um, um, big companies are starting um, uh, processes in, you know, in environmental agencies and state governments and in communities in 150 places around the country, all pretty much within a four or five year period. That's a big, big outlay of resources. That's a big um, um, series of public policy decisions that are going to get made. Um, but the Sierra Club and others have made the commitment to go after every one of them. And we've been doing it with, uh, through, the, through the law. And um, they're going after getting legislative changes, every kind of regulatory proceeding that you can imagine, public service commissions, um, um, air permit, water quality contests. Um, they're all going on in different places around the country. The second is advocacy on the environmental issues and organizing of both in communities where coal plants are being planted within um, the broader um, systems within the states and broader communities within the states getting interested business people, interested labor people, interested community people to come together in coalitions to, and, and become educated and oppose this. And then kind of what they um, asked me to do, which is to develop the financial background on this. Um, which I'll get to in a minute, but besides being very bad at environmental policy, the production of and the creation of coal plants is, are, is terrible economics, and I'll go through that in a minute. Um, and then the, the other aspect of the campaign is essentially to promote alternatives, because the finances, well, the finances clearly don't work for coal. The question becomes, well, do um, alternatives win solar energy efficiency? Do they, do, those economics make sense for a country. And it's increasingly becoming clear that they do. Um, and that's been very helpful for the, for the campaign places. So it's been a campaign, and I've been involved in public policy and political battles for most of my career. Um, and this has been one that has very significant and very real victories. Um, I would say that there are about 70 plants around the country that have been defeated. Uh, recently in Georgia, Wisconsin, and Iowa. And I'll just go through. In Wisconsin, um, people got together, and it was a, just a coalition um, led there um, by the Sierra Club, um, but, but um, uh, bringing in other organizations, including some business organizations, who came to the conclusion that the coal plants were going to be so expensive that it's going to drive up the cost of electricity and hurt the businesses. Um, and that was part of the economics there, was part of the work that um, we've been doing um, to raise that issue in the public forums. The company that brought the um, coal plant forward was battered pretty heavily in their state capital, and then ultimately the Public Service Commission there um, ruled that, in fact, A, they didn't need the electricity, the demand um, for the electricity wasn't there. B, the cost of the plant was going to be too expensive, and C, it was very likely that the United States was going to adopt stricter carbon regulations, and so the cost of the plant would be even more expensive. And since we didn't know any of them, any of those factors, it was better off to let it go, um, go back to the drawing board, try renewables and alternative, try renewables and energy efficiency strategy for the state, and then invest later in, um, hopefully, in what would be cleaner technology to produce electricity. 